Hello again, brothers and sisters. Today I am here to tell you about the war that you are currently in. And when I say war, I'm not talking about the war in Iraq or the war in Afghanistan. I'm talking about the war within ourselves. We, especially as Christians, must be at war with ourselves because we have to deny the flesh. And I'm going to show you through Scripture how the Scriptures point out that there is this battle going on within ourselves. And brothers and sisters, if we are not battling against our flesh, we are losing. I want to let you know that this is a lesson pertaining directly to your salvation. You know, I can deal with a lot of things. I can deal with prophecy and get into some intricate analysis of certain things in the Scripture. But there are other things, such as this lesson that I'm going to deal with today. That is of higher significance because it deals again with how you're going to be saved. And if you don't deny the flesh, you are not going to get into God's kingdom. You are not going to gain eternal life. You will not be saved. So I want to start off in Genesis, the sixth chapter, and the fifth verse. Because I want to tell you about the natural state of man's mind. We are wicked, we are carnal, we are sinful by nature. I want to read this to you. Genesis 6 and 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. See, this was the thoughts of man, even in Genesis, we're only to the sixth chapter. And yet we see man has totally gone astray. He has totally become wicked because of sin. And everything that is sinful, he wants to do. If you think about it, look at man today. Every, every act that is abominable, homosexuality, fornication, theft, murder, genocide among the nations, all these things we see among men. And these things are totally contradictory to God's word. And if you are going to be of God and be one of his, you have to deny this way of thinking. You have to deny this carnal mindset. But here we read the natural state of man's mind. Let's go to Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah says something similar to what Moses wrote. Jeremiah 17 and the ninth chapter. He tells us about the minds of men. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? You know what he said? He said it's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. This is the natural mindset of man. And I want to read something else because not only are we desperately wicked, but the spirit or the will to do right within us is weak. Listen to what Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed, when he was in his agony right before his death. This is what he said about the flesh. He said in Matthew 26 and 41, he says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Now why don't you, why should you watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation? He says, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. The flesh wants to succumb to every thing that is contrary to God. And again, when you get his mindset, when you get his word in you, you have to deny the flesh. You have opposites within you. You have the spirit of God and you have your own fleshly carnal mind battling against each other. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter. Peter also speaks about the eternal war of the flesh internal war of the flesh and the spirit. 1 Peter 2 and 11 reads, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. He tells them to do something. He says, abstain from fresh, fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Again, this is a war. This is a battle. And if you are not even conscious of this battle, you are already losing this war. You are already losing. See, true Christians understand that there's a war going on inside the mind. 
Because they read God's word about how they should love their enemies. Your flesh tells you to hate your enemy. We read about how you're not supposed to commit adultery. You're not supposed to fornicate. Your flesh is telling you something different. Your mind looks at a woman and desires after her. But the spirit says something else. The spirit says not to commit fornication, not to commit adultery, not to even lust upon a woman within your mind. See, there is a battle going on. Let's go to Galatians. Paul also speaks of this battle. See, the people you read about in Scripture are no different from yourself in the sense that they have to deal with the same types of temptation. The same types of carnal thinking. But the one thing, his, his servants, the prophets, the apostles, true Christians, the saints, deny the flesh. This is what Paul said. In uh, Galatians 5 and 16, he said, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, this is Direct instruction on what we should do. What should we do? Walk in the spirit to deny the flesh. Listen to this in 17. He says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Okay, so you got this war going on. See, you might want to do good. But as Jesus said, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Here Paul says, the spirit lusteth against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And these are contrary one to another so that ye cannot do the things that you will. See, it's not easy living a righteous lifestyle when you are truly righteous. Because first of all, you're going to be totally contrary to this wicked world. Not only that, you're going to be totally contrary to your own natural state of thinking, your own nature, your own flesh. This is not an easy road, but he says, walk in the Spirit. Verse 18, he says, but if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law, or under the penalty of the law. He says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. See, when you succumb to the flesh, you, these are the things you do. You commit sin. He says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See, if you succumb to the flesh, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. This is the penalty for not winning the war. Against your own flesh. Let's go to Romans the 8th chapter. You're not going to get into his kingdom. If you don't deny the flesh. You must set a standard as a Christian. You must walk the higher road as a Christian. You must walk in the spirit. You can't do what you want to do as a Christian. You have to do what God instructed you to do through his word. Romans 8. Or Romans 7. In the 15th chapter, 15th verse, well, he says about these two natures, he says, For that I do allow not, for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. So what is he saying? He's saying basically, I want to do right, but I struggle to do right. He says, If then I do that which I would not, I can sin unto the law that is good. Now then it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. See, this is Paul. He's saying that there is nothing good within himself. Nothing good within himself. Let's go to, I'm going to read verse 5. He says, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in 